Well, 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 here we are, my friends. Episode 50 of Ark Survival Evolved coming at you from the island. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? By far the longest Ark series I've ever done. And my friends, we're not even close to being done with this. Not even slightly. There's still so much to do in this series. And I really do hope that you guys are still excited for more episodes to come. I do want to start off today's episode by saying really a huge thank you for all of your lovely support throughout this series, throughout the four. 49 episodes previous to this and throughout my entire channel in general I really truly do appreciate your support in the form of the likes and the comments and the hints and tips and subscriptions even just watching the videos I really appreciate all of your wonderful support so today my friends is moving day and I know there's been a little bit of a delay since the last episode and that has been because I have been an extremely busy bee trying to prepare for this very episode let's check out our two Arja Davis here Alyssa and Adam they have basically both become pack mules for a whole bunch of valuable resources we are going to be taking to our brand new base area today. Adam has got sort of the bigger variety of stuff though, as you can see. Lots of stuff going on here. But, let's be honest, the big guy here, Quinn the Quetzal. Check out how much weight this guy has. Darn this 1,700. And that is because I have transported a lot, and I mean a lot of resources, to the various chests and locations that exist inside of here. So, yeah, you can see we've got a ton of cementing paste for our eventual metal building resources. There's just so much stuff. Most of our dudes have been cryopotted and put inside of this cryo fridge. We've got pretty much everything we need, like truly everything we need to make ourselves a brand spanking new base. We picked up all of the bigger crafting stations and bits of furniture which have resided in my sort of starter base here for the longest time. We've got them here, so we don't have to make them again, which is very, very good, of course. And uh, yeah, guys, I'm excited. I'm excited to take you guys to my brand new base location and begin. So my friends, if you guys are excited for today's episode then please do be sure of course to spend a second to head down below the video and drop a like i'm going to aim let's say for 500 likes we haven't hit that in a very long time in this channel let's see what you guys can do eh can we get 500 likes for episode 50 that will be amazing. Of course, do subscribe if you don't want to miss out on my future episodes from this series and this channel in general. And of course, if you want to go one further with your support, use code Python when ordering any of my Apex Gaming PCs for 5% off. So, the only creatures that are being left behind at this base is my small army of Megatheriums over there. We'll probably pick back up the Megatherium breeding at some point because we need to, of course, take down the beta and alpha level broodmother bosses. But also, so we've got Doug here, which is what I decided to name the second Dung Beetle. So yeah, Doug and our little army of Megatheriums, they're going to be looking after this place while we are off to our new base, okay? So yeah, I'm excited. I really, really am. So real quick before heading off, we will do the comments of the day at the start of the episode here because it is something that I do want to talk to you guys about. Pointless Oaf says, after finishing this series, you should keep your save and convert the series into your Ultima Arc series idea that you talk about. Now, I confess I'm in two minds about this idea because this was an island series and for us to suddenly convert it into a cluster slash Ultima Arc series, I think might get confusing for some folks, especially any newcomers that come over to the channel. I know you folks who are already subscribed and have been watching the series for a while, you'll of course know about what's been going on in terms of, you know, converting this series potentially into an Ultima Arc series. But for new folks who say want to look back at wherever episode one was, technically episode one would have been on the island series here. And at the time, it wasn't already an Ultima Arc series. So can you see what I mean by where the series confusion might come into play? So, yeah, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts, though. I do, of course, welcome your thoughts and your suggestions in the comments area. I do read the comments. So, if you have any thoughts, then let me know. But anyways, no more dilly-dallying, my friends. We have a big old journey on Quinn the Quetzal with Alyssa and Adam following us. Let's take flight, shall we?
So, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. This location is called Smuggler's Pass, and if you guys are interested, this is the GPS reference. 41.5, 67.5. Now, let me just give you guys kind of an indication of just how much prep went into this episode. If I bring up my map here, and I take off my gloves so we can actually see the map, uh, you'll be able to notice that I placed down a whole bunch of different waypoints, and that's because I had five base locations in mind and each of them in some way filled the criteria in some way or another that I had for a new base location in that number one it was sort of in the middle ish of all three obelisks number two that we had some resource nodes nearby for example with this particular base location here you'll be able to notice just in the distance there there's a whole bunch of metal nodes which is very very handy dandy because we're going to be making our base mostly out of metal today and alternatively in terms of resources we could just have all of the sort of valuable resources nearby, you know, obsidian, crystal, and metal. We have not one, but two mountains nearby, which is absolutely lovely. And probably the third criteria for a new base location is it just has to look nice. Now, a lot of you guys probably would have suggested the hidden lake, which I did have as a waypoint there, base location number three, but I kind of decided, do you know what? Kind of everybody goes to that location, so I wanted to do something a little bit bit different and also I myself have built at the Hidden Lake previously in one of my very very old Ark series back on Python GB when Ark was over there. So I wanted to do something different. So here we are at Smuggler's Pass. We've got some cool things going on and I'm actually pretty excited to show you guys what we're going to be doing here. Here we are. We've got Speedy here and what we'll be able to do with this guy is show you guys uh, the sort of things we've got going on here. We've got ourselves a nice waterfall nearby so a very very nice location. We've got ourselves a real nice flat land there with two smaller flat lands either side so I'm already kind of thinking we have sort of our main base on the top and then maybe some utility mini bases or little dino areas on the little two areas either side, right? And then if we really wanted to go all out, we could, if we really wanted to, attempt to build a ginormous bridge going from that top area there to the resource location area here. But to be honest with you guys, it really won't be necessary all that much because all we need to do is grab out our Anki and use our dream team of an Argentavis and that Anki to bring them over here and do a bit of metal mining. We don't have to go anywhere near as far as we used to have to to get metal. So as I was mentioning, we're going to be mostly making this base out of metal, but we're going to have some little different accent materials here and there. I'm thinking maybe some greenhouse skylights, maybe some greenhouse windows, so it looks like a proper base. And I was also thinking of mixing a few little tech components in amongst the rabble of resources we're going to be using here in that maybe we have ourselves tech doors for example tech doors as far as you guys were saying are like fully automatic you can literally just run up to them and walk in and the door will just close behind you which i think is absolutely Awesome. Alrighty, my friends, a little bit of organizing later, and we now have both of our Argentavis now completely empty, meaning that everything is within the Quinn Quetzal base of epicness, which means Quinn is now immobile. He will not be able to fly because the carry weight on him is actually kind of enormous. Like, seriously. <laughs> It's more than double the maximum, which is absolute insanity. So, uh, yeah, I just sincerely hope that no one comes over and tries to kill him because, uh, ha. We'll have a bit of a rough time if that winds up happening, my friends. But anyways, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go for a bit of a crystal run. Because we need crystal if we're going to be making ourselves greenhouse building pieces, okay? Uh, so, which one is actually nearer? We've got that mountain there. We've got that mountain there. I'd say... They're about equal. Oh no, that's that's not a good start, is it? What level are you? Level 40 Alpha Rex. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's not good, is it? <laughs> it's a little bit close for comfort, if you ask me. Oh, crystals. Here they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness me, there's so much stuff here. Holy crap. That's a giga. Oh man, okay. What level is this guy? Oh, man. Okay. So, uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to be, I would say, a stretch goal for the next few episodes. That is a damn near max level giga. And it's female as well. 
So with full taming effectiveness, it would wind up being level 200 plus upon taming. Oh, snap, dude. I've never tried to tame one of those dudes before. Uh, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what kind of aggro range it has. I'm going to have to keep a weather eye on it while I dig for some crystals. Not the most massive amount of crystal deposits on this particular mountain. I'm going to call it Giga Mountain because this guy is here. In fact, what is this actually called? Oh, it's just called Wilderness? Really? What a descriptive name. Well done, Ark. <laughs> All right, let's go check out this mountain ahead of us here. Maybe there's some more crystal deposits. Yeah, that's the thing about moving to a new location. I kind of don't really know what's around. Like, I know roughly what's around, but I don't know, uh, you know, how much stuff is around. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, we'll pop over to this mountain. We'll see what the sort of quantity of crystal is looking like. And then, uh, yeah, we really will begin on this thing. Ah, you see, this is looking like a way more healthy quantity of crystal deposits. There's some right ahead there. There's some to my right. There's some to my immediate right as well. Woo! Okay, brilliant. So, yeah, we've certainly filled out one of the new base criteria in that we have plenty of valuable resources nearby and not even to the same kind of distance as our old base was from the valuable resources. We don't have to travel as far to get valuable resources, which is obviously excellent. So my plan is we make ourselves some uh, foundations for the tech replicator, right? We put down the tech replicator. And then obviously, since the tech replicator acts as an anvil and a fabricator and, of course, has some special craft recipes as well uh yeah we should be pretty good in terms of being able to craft everything from only one crafting station i just realized something as well my friends this will be the first time we actually use the tech replicator to even craft anything in the first place we made it what a couple of episodes ago episode 48 i think but we never actually used it for any of the crafting stuffs that it can do so yeah Today's going to be the first ever time. Oh, snappers. All right, well, uh, let's see if we can't sort of keep this thing moderately out of the way. Uh, there we are, and there we are. And then we try to get this thing placed in, uh, let's say, about there. That looks pretty reasonably balanced on there. All right, brilliant. Then we put the element in there and check it out. We've got a whole bunch of stuff that we can make. We've got the element to be able to craft stuff. Don't worry, 24 is not the amount we have. We've got well over 100 more of it in Quinn the Quetzal, the Quetzal base there. So yeah, got lots of stuff, lots of stuff that we can make. But mostly it's going to be like tech doors and such like that. Yeah. Okay, turns out this base location... <laughs> actually has a loot crate spawn location here too. All right, well, we're going to wind up getting free loot as time goes on, apparently. It's only a green one, mind, but um, I'm sure we'll get at least a couple useful bits and bobs here and there, I guess. But anyways, guys, check it out. We are just about ready to begin on the construction of many, many things. We have all of our various bits and bobs in here now, and it's looking good. So turning this thing on, the first thing we need is a p -p -p polymer and a lot of it so um yeah oh, oh good lord that uh, that that crafts very quickly way quicker than i first anticipated my friends <laughs> wow see the thing is if we're going to be making tech stuff it actually turns out we're going to be needing quite a lot of polymer my friends a lot a lot of polymer but guys check it out there's the tech door uh what i want to see uh, let's do door frame. If I was to go ahead and put down, I don't know, maybe a double door frame? Like, would the tech door be able to fit onto that? Even if I was to make a regular metal frame, would it still fit onto that? I have no idea. All right, testing time. I'm doing this because I've simply never done it before. So for all of you guys who have done all this stuff before, you'll have to bear with me just a sec. But uh, yeah, let's just put that down. Uh, and can I put that in there? No, I can't. No snap point. Interesting. Okay, what about a regular door frame? Let's go and check that out. So there's the regular door frame. Uh, tech door. Oh, that's interesting. You can't put it with a metal door frame. Ah, you see, these these are the things I need to test, my friends. Looks like you only get one tech door frame per time, though, but never mind. That's okay. So, yep, yeah, we've got that now placed in. It looks mighty dang marvelous. And there we have it. Oh, that's so cool. Look at it. Look at it. It, like, auto-closes behind you. 
That is a really, really cool thing. So our very, very first loot crate in our new base location. And we essentially have ourselves a bit of a wooden kit here. Wooden window frames. Eh. Okay. All right. I'll tell you what. We're going to do a quick obsidian trip now. Yeah, I know. We just did a crystal trip, but now we're going to do an obsidian trip because it turns out that polymer is like one of the quintessential resources for a lot of these things here. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, check this out. Once we have enough, we can make ourselves both the tech rifle and the tech gauntlets. Why wouldn't I do that? Seriously. Turns out the obsidian nodes are actually a little bit closer to my base than I first thought. There's a whole bunch sort of strewn across the floor here. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> We're kind of getting metal at the same time, which actually is very, very useful. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. Lots of crafting going on. It actually turned out I had about 500 plus element dust on my person so we're making some unstable element shards and then eventually we should be able to make element out of the element shards as far as i can tell so yeah eventually it will be very much worthwhile us trying to make ourselves a bit of a tech farm and now that we have a chainsaw available to us which is one of the best ways to harvest a corpse of a tech creature oh yeah we should be able to farm out element reasonably easy now. The only unfortunate thing is, I mean, as you can see, I am able to craft it in my inventory myself, but I don't appear to be able to craft the element shards uh, inside of the tech replicator. Unless I can, and I'm just being stupid. If I was to transfer these over here, uh, no, doesn't seem to be the case. That's interesting. Why would you not be able to make element shards or unstable element shards in a tech replicator? Ugh. That uh, is kind of annoying, actually, but uh, never mind. It is what it is. So then, I mean, there they are. Tech gauntlets and tech rifle. Never, ever made either of those before. <laughs> This should be an interesting one. There they are. So then, am I to assume that you charge up these here tech bits with element? Is that what we do? Uh, do I have to put it on my person? I mean, I would presume so, right? Boom. There we are. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's look at ourselves real quick. Let's have a look at our gloves here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, do I, like, drag them up? Oh, I do drag them over. Oh, okay, so... Can I do it here as well? If I was to take off, let's say this, put the tech rifle on, do I reload it with element? Uh, wait, did that just work? Not even entirely sure, if I'm honest with you. Uh, five. Right. Oh! Oh, it just sort of auto reloads. Cool. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, right, so how many shots do you get per time? Oh! Oh, okay, so it goes down by 2%. So if I was to shoot, let's say this guy. Uh, poof! Go on, take him out. Oh, no! What about now? Darn it. <laughs> I suck. Okay, so you get 50 shots per element, apparently, with this here tech rifle. Oh, boosh! 240 damage. That's, that's reasonably significant, actually. Oh. Don't tell me I actually managed to just shoot that guy from afar. What can I say? I'm the greatest marksman who's ever lived. <laughs> Unfortunately, damage-wise, it actually doesn't compare with my Ascendant Crossbow. My Ascendant Crossbow actually does, for the most part, more damage compared to the Tech Rifle. Maybe, just maybe, if we somehow manage to find ourselves an Ascendant Tech Rifle Blueprint, if you even can get those, uh, then, you know, that'd be kind of amazing, wouldn't it? But still, you know, look at me beginning on my tech journey here. <laughs> oh, man, do I feel good. And bang goes my metal supply. Oh, man. Metal doesn't last very long when you're creating foundations now, does it? Good lord. Okay, well, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come to actually begin on the building process for this particular base. Uh, so, let me just try to remind myself, we've got ourselves a little flat platform down there. We've got a flat platform on the other side. So, I'm thinking what we do is we start off sort of sort of bang in the middle, or at least try to get sort of bang in the middle here. If I was to do the whole orbital camera thing, uh, I should be able to find where the middle is. So, there's that side, and I would say the middle is about here. Where I am right now, okay? So, boosh! That's the middle. Okay, right. 
Now, we try to figure out some sort of shape. It's not going to be a box shape. No, 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 no. That's not how we roll these days, my friends. We're going to go for a nice, interesting shape. What that shape is going to be? I've got no idea. <laughs> I'm kind of winging this. There's no real sort of creative mode to this game, is there? Not in default vanilla arc, anyway. So, yeah, a lot of the time you really are just sort of winging your builds, aren't you? But, you know, I've so far I've done a fairly reasonable job of winging it, I would say. So... Just gotta keep on, I guess. Annoyingly, I have to place down this here forge so I'm able to get more ingots uh, a bit quicker here, my friends. Which means, yes, it is in the way of the building process, but uh, what am I to do, eh? Now, ideally, what I think I'd like to do is make the tech replicator sort of the centerpiece of this entire base. I mean, it is... The coolest looking thing I think I've ever seen in Ark, and it most definitely does deserve to be a centerpiece. So, yeah, when we do get ourselves a decent metal supply, again, then, <laughs> yeah, we will probably relocate the tag replicator onto this here platform, and then that will hopefully be where it permanently resides in our brand new base here. Well, my friends, to say that this episode is taking a while to make is understatement of the century. I've spent literally multiple days on this episode, but it is episode 50. It's a special. We're going to make it a special episode in that uh, hopefully what I'm going to try and do as an episode end goal is we're going to get the infrastructure of the base done. And then maybe in the next couple to a few episodes, we'll start sort of populating it, the interior with the various bits and bobs that we have in our world and the bits and bobs we have on Quinn the Quetzal, of course. But uh, yeah. This is not going to be some crummy small little base. No, no, no. This is why it's taken such a long time. Look at the size of the foundations. Each foundation takes 50 metal ingots. So, yeah, I did do a metal trip over on that rock over there, which I showed you guys earlier. Very, very handy dandy source of metal, if you ask me. But, uh, yeah. Even that's probably going to be just absolutely chewed through in a matter of milliseconds. Like, with all of these bits and bobs that we're doing here, it is honestly... It's it's not going to take long to use all the stuff up. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's taken a while, guys. You can see already that I've been trying to come up with some little wall designs here and there. We're actually going to use some greenhouse walls here as windows, essentially. Because I thought that would be a really, really cool idea. So, yeah, guys. Yeah. I want to make it look good from the outside as well as from the inside, okay? That is the goal, ultimately, for this build. You know, it's times like this, I genuinely wish I had multiple industrial forges. The thing is, it takes quite a lot to make an industrial forge, doesn't it? Yeah, look at that, 2,500 metal ingots. <sighs> as much as, yeah, we can get that reasonably easy, it's mostly the waiting. But... When you think about it, if you had multiple industrial forges, you would be able to get metal coming up the wazoo very, very quickly, wouldn't you? So, I don't know. Maybe something to consider for the future. Especially considering I'm doing a lot of waiting now for all of these metal ingots to even come into existence in the first place. Oh, man, this is taking a while. This is taking a long time. So then, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. The almighty time of finally placing on a permanent basis that is placing this tech replicator okay so let's go ahead and pick it up we'll pick up all of these foundations as it will because they are most certainly going to be useful in the build i have made a good amount of progress since the last cut as well ladies and gentlemen so uh, yeah check this out this elevated section here this is going to be where the tech replicator is permanently going to reside okay so let's say it goes right about there uh, can i even get out yes i can okay beautiful uh let's just make sure it's not like going out the back or anything oh it is a little bit oh yikes anyways the intention is this underside is going to be maybe like i don't know maybe a utility area maybe a storage area something like that i'm not entirely sure and basically what's going to happen is either side of it we're going to have an industrial forge okay so we have one forge here and we are going to have a second one symmetrical on the other side okay so yeah we've got some pretty cool things going on here my friends this is taking a very very long time but i'll tell you what i firmly believe it is going to be worth it i really do so yeah we can go like under here we can go onto one of our many balconies it's going to be many many balconies we have at this place because at the end of the day i mean just look at the surroundings you know looks glorious doesn't it it really really does so yeah this is like one of the balconies we'll have one symmetrical on the other side of course so out here we'll be able to look at the waterfall maybe we'll have ourselves another balcony out here to look at the waterfall even better you know 
It's just, it's getting there, my friends. My vision in my mind is starting to take shape. The culmination of the tech doors and the metal and the greenhouse materials all seem to be working really quite well together, I would say. So all we gotta do is just keep on going. I wanna get the footprint of this thing done before my next progress update, and then we shall try to get the actual structure done to finish today's episode, okay? So, yeah, let's keep on. I mean, come on, my friends. That's a pretty majestic sight, isn't it? I actually had to heighten this midsection by another wall uh, because for some reason the hitboxes of the sort of legs of the tech replicator were sort of sticking through the floor previously, which were preventing me from being able to walk underneath. But uh, do you know what? I think it was a blessing in disguise because check it out. It now feels nice and airy underneath here. And as a result, we've got ourselves a bit more space to do stuff with, which is absolutely amazing. So uh, yeah, guys, this thing really is front and center and check this out as well i finally got my second industrial forge place down as well all is looking good baby but anyways as i mentioned before i bring you guys back once we've got sort of the footprint of this build done we have this large entrance hall here my friends with this door which kind of just leads out to a sheer cliff i need to figure something out with that uh, in a bit but uh, yeah anyways yeah we've got ourselves a large entrance hall leading up to sort of the main center area here, my friends. There's so many cool things, so much space to put down various utility bits and bobs, so much space to put a bunch of storage as well. In fact, talking of storage, uh, can I, by any chance, ah, there we are, be able to access my dude here? I can, uh, because what I want to do is I want to grab out these vaults, okay, and I want to see if I could put those vaults in the underneath part here. I mean, I have a feel. Yeah, we can. Oh, oh, that's brilliant. Okay, uh, all we need to do is make sure they're not like sticking into the walls, and then we can roll over this side, and bada bing, bada boom. It doesn't stick out the back. Oh yeah, it does a little bit. Ah, oh, darn it. <laughs> But uh, yeah, guys, the reason we've got vaults is because of the 350 slot inventory space you get within it. Well worth it, my friends. Well worth it. And since we have the space to put them in. Why wouldn't I put them in, you know? So then, with the storage vault area done and dusted, and with a couple of little storage boxes here and there, just to sort of uh, bulk up the amount of storage we really have here, I guess the time has come for us to get the remainder of the walls on, and uh, yeah... That's rather a concern, actually. This build is already three walls tall, but it looks like we're going to need to more than double that. We can probably go ahead and get away with only doubling it on the sides where the industrial forges are, but we're going to need to make the center area way taller. I'm thinking maybe eight walls tall? It's going to be a hella tall build, my friends, but uh, yeah... It's going to be worth it, my friends. We won't have to do it again, hopefully, unless we wind up making a full tech tier base at some point very much later in the series when we've got easy access to all of the resources for them, you know? But uh, certainly for now, for a fair while, this base will most certainly be doing the job for us. <laughs> I mean, come on, I've been working on this literally for multiple days. This is a multiple day episode, and I hope that you guys have been enjoying it so far because as much as it has been a tall task getting this build done and dusted or, you know, getting it up to this point, uh, I've had a lot of fun, actually. I really, really have, you know? Just sort of winging it and seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. That's all part of the arc building experience, isn't it? When you don't have creative mode, it's just sort of like... You just wing it, really. You know, just like the very, very old days of Minecraft. Like Minecraft Alpha. That's what you did, wasn't it? <laughs> Hey guys, check this out. So there is actually a blue loop beam directly on the tech replicator. There it is. <laughs> what? I honestly couldn't do that again. That was literally, it landed perfectly in the middle of the tech replicator. What the hell? <laughs> it's so dumb, man. Oh, goodness me. Anyways, guys, I'm still in the process of building this place up. And what I've decided to do was actually integrate a greenhouse into this build. You can see we've got ourselves a very, very large window here. And this entire space here is all going to be greenhouse. The good news, of course, is the fact that we have a bunch of rivers down there. So it might be a bit of a convoluted process. But we can probably bring a bunch of irrigation pipes from down there up to here. So we have a water source, you know. 
I thought it was a cool idea. Well, my friends, I'm happy to say the progress is being made slowly but surely, my friends. <laughs> I can't wait for this build to be done. I really, really can't. I mean, for an episode 50 special, this build is rather extravagant, isn't it? It is by far the most extravagant, most intricate arc build I have done to date. There's a lot of balconies, a lot of areas to walk, some seriously high-end crafting stations, and a lot of storage. It's just enormous. We've got this balcony here, for example. We can go underneath. We've got this balcony here, for example. And here's the kicker. Guys, if we were to go up into the greenhouse, which this is, as you can clearly see, what we could do is we could take this little area here out to the top back center. Hey? Eh? Eh? Hey, this is pretty cool, isn't it? This is a hell of a build, my friends. A hell of a build. It just looks great, doesn't it? It truly looks great. I'm so happy with the results so far. I really, really am. And I really cannot wait to have this thing done. I really can't wait. Because in the next three episodes, we will be populating this and making it into our home. We're going to make this base into a home, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, we've pretty much just got to finish putting the roof over the tech replicator and getting the entrance hallway all done and dusted. And then that... My friends, will we get for this build? <laughs> I've been doing this for so many days and so many hours. It's ridiculous, but it's worth it. My friends, it's so worth it. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a very, very long time and certainly one of the longest recordings I have ever done for a single episode, not only in an arc series, but in general in my career here on YouTube. And I really do hope that you guys enjoy this build. Let's hop on speedy here and let's check this out. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our brand new base. You enter through this landing platform here. You land your little fly rather like that. And then you get yourself in here and you have yourself a good time. As you can see, there's like a little bit of an entrance porch kind of dealio here. We have a massive entrance extended porch here. Hallway, whatever you want to call it. We could put any number of things in here. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is just the biggest thing I've ever built. This center area alone is the biggest thing I've ever built. To host a tech replicator inside an arc build, it takes quite some materials, but we got there. We have the tech replicator taken front and center here as the main centerpiece of the entire build. We have two industrial forges. We have our storage area underneath the tech replicator as well. We have multitudes of balconies to admire our surroundings here, which I think is really, really good. I was thinking maybe uh, we could put some seats or just something to make this place look nice. Maybe I'll just have a little bit of a sit down and just sort of enjoy the view, enjoy my surroundings and just contemplate life and the, quite frankly, amazing build that I've done here. I'm hoping you guys will agree with that anyway. But yeah, we come out to the back platform where we have our pack mule. We have Adam, the Argent Tavis, of course, leveled for speed and weight. So very, very good, my friends. And once again, we can admire our surroundings. I mean, look at that waterfall. Isn't it glorious? I think it is. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's the cool thing now. We pop up here and we have a choice. Either we can go into our greenhouse, which of course will be eventually populated with a whole bunch of crop plots, or we can go out onto the top back balcony here and we can have ourselves a really good time. I mean, come on. Look at how that is looking. It's a pretty cool looking build, isn't it? Eh? I mean, I gotta, I gotta give myself a tap in the back for that one. I think this is really, really good. I stuck it out, I got the materials grinded, and smelted, and materials made, and building pieces made. Oh man, it's been, it's been a great time, and I really do hope that you guys have enjoyed this episode, and I really do hope that you guys also have enjoyed this build. It'll probably be a while before I do a build of this magnitude again, my friends. Believe me. So, my friends, the only real task that I need to try and get done in the not too distant future is for us to go ahead and actually empty out Quinn the Quetzal. As you guys know, Quinn is currently immobilized because he has a ridiculous ton of stuff on him. We're going to periodically wind up uh, transferring a bunch of stuff from Quinn the Quetzal into our brand new base here, trying to make sure things are nice and organized as we go along as well. And then we need 
need to try to find a new permanent place for Quinn the Quetzal to reside. These little landing platforms are definitely not going to do the job. Speedy and Adam have taken up both of them anyway. So, I don't know. If you guys have any suggestions as to where Quinn the Quetzal can reside on a slightly more permanent basis, let me know in the comments area below. But, uh, yeah, my friends, that is indeed going to wrap it up for today's video. Guys, we did the comment of the day at the beginning of today's episode, so that is why we're not doing one at the end here. So, I'm going to wrap it up and I'm going to say a huge thank you for all of you guys for watching today's video. If you've made it this far in this video, and I imagine this has been an extended episode, then uh, truly... Thank you for sticking by me, and I really do hope that you guys have enjoyed today's episode, today's things that we've done, and today's build. Of course, if you guys haven't already and you want to support the series, please do be sure to head down below the video and spend a second to drop a like. 500 likes is the amount we're aiming for, but anything above that would be absolutely amazing. Let's see just how much support there is still for this series. If you guys are new to this series from today's episode, then a big welcome to you, and I hope you guys have enjoyed Enjoyed the video and I really do hope that you'll consider subscribing to the channel with those bell notifications turned on so you don't miss out on my future content. But for now, my friends, thank you very much for watching. I really do hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate everything you've given me over the course of the series. I really, truly do. Thank you. Have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.